Hello everyone, I'm Gus Kaikonen. If you don't know me, I'm the uh, artistic director at the Peterborough Players. I love Shakespeare. He's been very good to me, and, and I've had the great good fortune to act and direct in 16 of his wonderful plays and um, in over 30 different productions. This is um, a speech from Hamlet. Most of you probably know Hamlet has returned Denmark, where he's the prince, because his father has died. But once he gets there, the ghost of his father comes to him and tells him that he didn't just die, he was murdered. And he was murdered by the man who has now married Hamlet's mother and become the king of Denmark. And before Hamlet has a chance to deal with this, the players arrive and um, want to perform. So Hamlet requests a speech from one of them, which is a um, someone recounting how Hecuba, the queen of Troy, responded to seeing her husband Priam, the king of Troy, cut to bits. And the actor gets so upset that Polonius stops the performance, concerned about the actor's health. And then all of the... Um, other characters leave the stage, leaving Hamlet alone. And he turns to the audience and he says, Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage warm, Tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit and all for nothing for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him or he to Hecuba that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general ear with horrid speech. Make mad the guilty, appall the free, confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull and muddy-meddled rascal, peak like John of Dreams, unpregnant of my cause, and can say nothing. No, not for a king, upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Breaks my pate across, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face, gives me the lie in the throat as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this, eh? Zooms, I should take it. For it cannot be but that I am, pigeon-livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter, or ere this I should have fattened all the region kites with this slave's awful. Bloody body villain! Remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindness, villain! Oh, vengeance! <laughs> this is most brave, that I, the son of a dear father, murdered, prompted to my revenge by heaven and hell, must, like a whore, unpack my heart with cursing, and fall cursing like a very drab, a scullion fire upon it, foe about my brain. I have heard that guilty creatures sitting at a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it hath no tongue, will speak with the most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tent him to the quick. If he do blush, I know my course. The spirit I have seen may be the devil. The devil hath the power to assume a pleasing shape, yea, and perhaps out of my weakness and my melancholy, as he is very potent with such spirits, abuses me to damn me. I'll have grounds more relative than this. The play's the thing. 
wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Love Shakespeare.